Christianity is absolutely everywhere in China. Some people say it's banned, not at all. And I'm in the place where Christianity began in China, the Vatican, the smallest country in the world. But it's also the place where it nearly went all wrong. So a few years before Elon Musk bought Twitter, the only way to communicate would be by traveling. And so the Pope in the Vatican, he sent missionaries across the world. And these missionaries, their mission was to spread the word of Christianity. So they would particularly go to places like Asia, Africa, and the Americas, where Christianity at that time was not so common. And the most famous one of these missionaries that was sent by the Pope from the Vatican was Matteo Ricci. You might have heard of him. Someone I greatly admire. He was a mathematician. I also am too. But he was sent all the way to China, where not many foreigners would go at that time, by the way, to promote Christianity, to introduce the ideas to them. And so how he did that was, to begin with, he got on their site, he got on their good books. So he introduced a lot of Western culture, he introduced a lot of Western mathematical ideas, um, astrology as well, all of these things to impress them. His next step was then to integrate into Chinese culture. So he worked with many Chinese scholars, he wrote literature with them, he wore traditional Confucius robes, he learned the language, he mastered it, and they really admired him. In fact, so much so, the emperor invited him to the Forbidden City. Of course now, anyone can go as a tourist, but back then, you were very lucky. It was pretty much unheard of for a foreigner to go there. And it was at this point when they trusted him, when he introduced Christianity to the Chinese. In fact, he established the very first church in China in Beijing. Now at the time, China had two main religions, Buddhism and Taoism. However, when Christianity was introduced, many people were very intrigued by this prospect. So many people converted. There were a lot of atheists as well who were very interested in this new idea. It's coming from the West. And so there was a lot of Christians at this time in China. However, this is when things got sticky. In the 17th century, Matteo Ricci, who was really embracing the life and culture in China, he said to the emperor that although we have this idea of Christianity, I really respect you know, the idea of Confucianism in China and I respect your beliefs uh, and values and I don't think that they contradict each other. So he said to the Chinese, you can be both, you can believe in both. For the missionaries though, they didn't like this and they told the Pope, they told the Vatican and so the Pope declared that no, you're not allowed to combine both. And so there was this kind of big conflict uh, with China and the Vatican at this point. Things like the Opium War brought in a lot of Western culture into China. So a lot of Christian schools were built in China. However, the Japanese invasion of China then took all of this away. So it was up and down and up and down. And the Pope stopped sending missionaries to China to promote this idea of Christianity. So it really declined after this point. China felt very disrespected saying, you know, this is our culture. And so they persecuted many Chinese Christians at this time. And for today, well, China doesn't really need the Vatican. So there's no need for them to introduce and bring missionaries uh, to introduce the idea of Christianity because it's such an open world today. And there are a lot of Christians already in China. This idea uh, of it being banned is just totally not true. And the relationship between the Vatican and China today is hugely complex. And it's mostly to do with the fact that the Vatican have no diplomatic relations with Beijing. So they recognize the Taiwanese government as the sole government of China. They don't recognize the Beijing government, the communist one. So places like Britain, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, America, all of these, they don't recognize Taiwan as a country. They have no diplomatic relations. So actually here, uh, there is a Taiwan embassy. So you won't be able to find that in many places in the world. However, the Pope and the Vatican itself, they want to have a relationship with China. Uh, the Pope himself, he's written letters and they've made some kind of provisional agreement to get a better relationship uh, between the two places. But yeah, uh, this is the Vatican and surprisingly it has a strong relationship with China in the past and today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a look around. It is absolutely tiny. Uh, when they say smallest country in the world, wow, it's smaller than most cities, smaller than most towns. It really is tiny, but beautiful nonetheless. So I'll have a little look around and I'll see you guys next time. So bye-bye.